Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to Turning Towards Life. This is Lizzie and Justin for another week, another episode, another conversation of this big old conversation that we've been in for many years now. I can't believe I can say many years, it's still hilarious to me that we've done it for this long. And you are all extremely welcome here, however you're listening, however long you've known us for, whether you've just landed on us by random or whether you know us from some of our work that we do. Maybe you've come into one of our spaces as a guest or something and you're caught, you know, curious to learn more. Everybody is so welcome. And obviously there's lots of different ways you might be listening, might be on a podcast, might be here live on Facebook, maybe on YouTube, all kinds of different places. So thank you for being with us. We acknowledge many times that this isn't just a conversation between us, Justin, that it's a conversation between us and many, many other people, which is such a delight. And every time I hear that someone else is benefiting from this, I get this renewed kind of excitement that we're in conversation with people that we don't even know, but we would know and love if we actually met them. And then when you do actually get to meet people who listen and join in, it's completely delightful. I'm so grateful for everybody listening and everybody being here and grateful for you, Justin, for being a person that chooses the sources that you choose. It's so wonderful. And thank you for this week's by my one of my favorite humans. And he doesn't even know I exist. Uh, Nick Cave. I think he, I think it's probably that way around in lots of cases with Nick Cave that many people love him, but um, he doesn't know that they exist, or at least he, he does know, but not really in, in an individual way. And I've been reading his, mm. uh, his book, Justin, uh, Faith, Hope and Carnage. And it's incredibly brilliant. If anybody feels like learning more about Nick and his life and my goodness me, and his creativity and his family, and he's so disclosive and so warm and brilliant. And it's kind of in a conversational style. So it's very easy to read, which I really love. And so I'm very glad to be to be talking about him and, and his source today. Mm. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, everyone. And to extend my welcome to all of you who are here with us and just say like I sometimes say at the end, but I'll say at the beginning, if you know of other people who might benefit from this conversation or these conversations, please share it with them because that is really the only way that people find their way to us is because somebody told them about this. So you're very welcome to do that. Um, It was so funny, Lizzie, when I was choosing the source for this week, I was sure that we had had a ton of Nick Cave's writing and so I did what I always do and went back, go, went back to the Turning Towards Life website, which has, as you know, has all the sources and you can search them. So I searched for Nick Cave and there was only one in the five years that we've been, we've been doing this. We read Nick Cave once before. And I realized that the reason was, is because I have this huge stack of things that he's written in my possible Turning Towards Life sources, including many paragraphs from Faith, Open Carnage, which I've also read, which I think is beautiful. Um, and found deeply moving and I sort of devoured it in, in, a, in a couple of days um, a few weeks ago. So I really love the idea that we know and love Nick Cave and he has no idea in a, in a um, specific concrete sense who we each are. And um, that is really closely related to what he writes as well um, here. And it, it, it's um, it's giving me the joy of feeling, and I, I want to address this to who everyone we're speaking with and having this conversation, all of those of you who know us, but we don't yet know you. Um, because on a smaller scale than Nick K for sure, but <laughs> the same dynamic is here with us, Lizzie. But the lovely thing is we can say to everyone, um, we'd love to hear from you. So if you're somebody who knows us, but we don't net yet know you, you can email us. Uh, hello at turning towards dot life is one way, or you could join our turning towards life Facebook group and we can get to know you that way, which would be a great joy. So this um, source is as always available on our Facebook group and on our website and um, in the email that comes out if you sign up for that at turning towards life and in the show notes for the podcast all those places you can find it but more importantly it is on nick cave's um red hand files website where he writes very often very generously so this is um an excerpt from that 
uh, the everyday human gesture is always a heartbeat away from the miraculous that ultimately we make things happen through our actions way beyond our understanding or intention that seemingly our seemingly small ordinary human acts have untold consequences that what we do in this world means something that we are not nothing and that our most quotidian human actions by their nature burst the seams of our intent and spill meaningfully and radically through time and space changing everything our deeds no matter how insignificant they may feel are replete with meaning and a vast consequence and they constantly impact upon the unfolding story of the world whether we know it or not all action provokes change nothing is ineffectual nothing rather than feel impotent and useless you must come to terms with the fact that as a human being you are infinitely powerful and take responsibility for this tremendous power even our smallest actions have potential for great change positively or negatively and the way in which we all conduct ourselves within the world means something you are anything but impotent you are in fact exquisitely and frighteningly dynamic as are we all and with all respect you have an obligation to stand up and take responsibility for that potential it is your most ordinary and urgent duty thank you justin a heartbeat away from the miraculous the everyday human gesture is always a heartbeat away from the miraculous that ultimately we make things happen through our actions way beyond our understanding or intention that our seemingly small ordinary human acts have untold consequences that what we do in this world means something that we are not nothing and that our innermost sorry our most quotidian human actions by their nature burst the seams of our intent and spill meaningfully and radically through space and time changing everything our deeds, no matter how insignificant they may feel, are replete with meaning and of vast consequence. And they constantly impact upon the, the unfolding story of the world, whether we know it or not. All action provokes change. Nothing is ineffectual, nothing. Rather than feel impotent and useless, you must come to terms with the fact that as a human being, you are infinitely powerful and take responsibility for this tremendous power. Even our smallest actions have potential for great change, positively or negatively, and the way in which we all conduct ourselves within the world means something. You are anything but impotent. You are in fact exquisitely and frighteningly dynamic, as are we all, and with all respect, you can have an obligation to stand up and take responsibility for that potential. It is your most ordinary and urgent duty. Bush, I love the idea of an ordinary and urgent duty, like something that's in the everyday that's ours. There's so um, hope making in me to feel you, what happened in me as you read that, Lizzie, and, and as I read it, because one of my reasons for choosing this is the feeling I very often have, which is most familiar to me right in those first part of the day after I've woken up, which tells me some part of me that tells me the world is too big, um, I'm too small, everything's so complex and so beyond my understanding. How could I possibly make any difference here at all? Mm. And that part part of me I know wants to protect me by, and it's a very sort of um, sweet and unhelpful kind of protection in a way, sweet in the sense of um, well-intentioned and uh, momentarily relieving, which is to sort of disappear under my duvet and pretend that I don't exist. And I'm so glad for Nick Cave for saying, uh-uh, that's not how things are you really need to you really need to pay attention here mm. um it's very very helpful it, i notice in his writing that the 
that the act of us telling one another that we matter matters. So I'm not just reading this as a sort of bit of philosophy about how people are and how we are in the world and what free will is. And I've got lots, uh, you know, I've got lots of thoughts and feelings about all of that. But actually, I think what's most important to me right now is that Nick is saying, you matter, what you do matters. Take great care of it. Um, and know that you are of consequence. And that that relational act of him saying it mm. seems so important to me that we say this to one another. And that we don't rely, we don't only rely on ourselves to remember it. Yeah. Because I think maybe, maybe when we're on our own in the world is so huge. I mean, it's it's I can't, I'm not gonna even begin to begin to come up with adjectives for how big, much bigger existences than each of us in our physical size or its complexity or something i realize i really need people to say to me you matter what you do matters and you're a consequence and that also then reminds me that it's my job to say that to other people too that this isn't all just that i'm not the sort of sole recipient of this this message so you matter lizzie and I matter, and Nick matters, and everyone who's listening to this. I so feel and think that this is this is true, that every action we take is of consequence, no matter whether it is a giant public act that 100 million people are going to know about, or some intensely private act that only I will know, only I will witness directly, that all of that, and I want to read this bit, bursts the seams of our intent and spills meaningfully and radically through time and space, changing everything. And when I know that, when, I, when somebody else takes the trouble to remind me of that, it, what it awakens in me is a kind of deep care for, it reminds me that my intent really, really does matter and that how I choose to attend to the world really does matter. I think that can only be a good thing when we do that. I mean, good for each of us, but good for all of us. Yeah, I can. Um, so I can tell that this is a turning towards life source, Justin, because it does the same thing as normally happens to me, which is I get kind of, you know, I arrive here having just kerfuffled around with an egg and a, um, managed to get myself sitting in the chair and Vespa's got play-doh everywhere and is telling me that I have to dance up the stairs if I'm allowed to leave the room and you know whatever the, the, the just happenedness is which all has its like profound beauty but also it's like we're in our own space I'm in a small world and then all of a sudden I sit down and get with the source and you read it to me and I get kind of shot out into something very, very big, something much bigger than my kind of blinkered, small perception of life that seems to come about in, the, in my habitual ways. And so somehow I think one of, the, one of the functions of turning towards life for me and maybe for other people is it does this miraculous something of connecting us to something bigger, which is what Nick's writing is inviting me into. And so I'm seeing more and more that the way that we choose sources, Justin, is that they're connected to something far more vast than our ordinary habitual ways of feeling small and afraid and insignificant and lonely and all of the things that you could say about, you know, maybe a popcorn kernel or something. They're like the opposite of that. They they include the popcorn kernel, but also write about and feel about and sense into something much much more aligned with probably what we truly are the, the the truth of a human being is this kind of vastness and so i'm appreciating how this how nick and his imagination his reality his way of seeing and feeling and being in the world catapults me into a wider understanding of what it is to be human and it's just not a given that this is the kind of thing he writes. 
you know, I love it that he is this person who, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have any clue about the kind of the extent of his creative output or whatever, but that he can be this musical person that doesn't only do music, but addresses human beings in their suffering and holds these kind of spaces and conversations for our deepening and our growth. And it makes me so hopeful that that is who he is and what he does in the world. And I know I know like barely anything about it by comparison to probably what he's up to in the world. And so I feel thrown into something bigger and like what, what comes to me just in as well is like all of the little things that I have done in my life. I can suddenly kind of go back and allow them to be of consequences that I don't understand or know about, which is a really beautiful thing to do. Like looking back at yesterday and noticing the way I spoke to a young person who I've never met before and telling him that I'm going to go and see his play because he's playing Macbeth on the 7th of February. And I, literally just met him but he seemed really lovely and he's a friend of my niece and I just said well I'll I'll come to your play you know who knows what impact that had and I hadn't thought this until now who knows what that what that is to have an adult say I'll come and see you I don't know you but I'm I'm really happy to come and can you get me a ticket please and just small things like that that I go I walk away from and don't really think about again and so having this heartbeat away from the miraculousness feeling of all of the ways that I interacted with the world yesterday. And then obviously my whole lots of years. It's a very different way than just throwing it all away. So I, I notice I can just throw everything away. Oh, that does, that's happen. That doesn't matter anymore. And likewise, I could throw everything away from today, but to feel this mattering, to feel this, powerfulness of each of our actions and that there are consequences and there are there's responsibility to be taken I think sometimes that can feel quite onerous but I don't feel that in this moment I feel like there's opportunity to make a difference there's opportunity to impact others and the world and if I if I make make this term infinitely powerful part of my story of what it is to be me which I can do because I'm human like I get I get that privilege I can decide I can say oh I can include that in the story of who I am that I have power if I have power what then am I going to do what am I gonna how am I gonna act how am I gonna reflect how am I gonna do today so I feel um I feel made powerful by the act of being told that I'm powerful. (laughs) Mm. Very touched by the, um, what you just said about this conversation you had with someone you'd never met before. And what came up with me in me was all the tiny interactions that I have any of us has during a day, how we speak to someone, how we look at someone, the tone in which we respond to something, how we move our bodies, how we gesture, how much time we spend on this or that. And if we could see them, I, I could feel that the, you know, part of the the consequence of the way that Nick is writing about this is, is this sense that, that each of those spills radically through time and space changing everything but we can't know in what we really can't know in what way it's going to change everything um but maybe the best we can do is to treat each each every time we act to treat it with the sort of sacredness of we're planting a seed somehow we can't know exactly what the seed is going to grow into but could we treat it with the same amount of reverence our own actions with that kind of reverence and then we might not be careless with them, which is different from being, so being powerful is not the same as being in control, but it, it draws, it, what it draws very strongly to me is this, this way you were talking about one of the things about being a human is that we can, we have this privilege of being able to 
have a story about things and choose choose what stories we have and some stories are better than others in the sense of being more life-giving or kinder or embody more wisdom or care or something and and allied to that is we have this gift of intention that we that we get to choose with what intention we do what we do and what kind of attention we bring to it and and that that is just sort of on a level of philosophy i suppose that there are there's quite a strong undercurrent in contemporary culture to say that we don't really have that 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 we're essentially uh i heard this term the other day um uh, wet machines mm. you know which sort of sort of implied that there are even people who say that our consciousness is an illusion mm. which like which seems nonsensical to me because for my consciousness to be illusion, something has to be experiencing an illusion, which means I have to be conscious to experience. I mean, there's all kinds of troubles with that, but the point is not the philosophical argument. The point is it's not that hard to have a story about ourselves that says we're just mechanisms in a great big mechanism when we don't really matter and it's not really up to us. And it's true that there's a lot that isn't up to us in the sense of how we're shaped by who and what came before and the kind of bodies we have and the, the social structures in the world that we find ourselves in and like all kinds of stuff is outside of our capacity to control. But that doesn't mean that we ever, ever give up these twin possibilities of how we pay attention and what our intention is. And that's why I think that even when we make a small act that nobody else witnesses, but we do, that that this claim that Nick makes that it resonates out in, into existence in very profound ways, I think it's equally true. Because it's not to do with the immediate visibility. The fact that I'm changed by what I do changes existence. It will also change my interactions with other people. So, um, what a you know so what, what a joyful and sacred and solemn kind of responsibility it is when we can take on that how we approach each moment is of significance and is is of meaning and that that is in our gift even if the range of actions we have available to us is small and even if we're not famous or well known or you know have big reach but have very very close in reach that that's true all the time and that sometimes i find that um frightening but more than anything i think it's a it's an absolute wonder that that's who we who we can be i feel like this conversation meets like a really deep human need to be known by the world like to be recognized or something and I'm recognizing in me, you know, this whole thing about being famous. It's like, I don't know, I, I feel like lots, there's a part of lots and lots of people that wants to be well known. And, and to have an impact. And, and I think it's like, for me, I feel like if you're not, if you don't have reach, you can't be powerful or you can't impact, you can't be known in the way that part of me wants to be known. And so somehow this conversation is also kind of testament to the fact that I'm not alone. I, I don't know, I'm just kind of somehow making this connection by wanting to be known for something or have a legacy of something is a kind of distorted version of, or a, a kind of, hmm, like a personal version of the universal thing that belongs to all of us, which is, I want to matter. It matters very profoundly to this human to matter in the world. And maybe fame is like one of those places that we would be assured that we matter but I mean interestingly maybe if you email emailed and interviewed lots of famous people about them feeling like whether they mattered or not. I, I wonder what that would bring because I, 
not that I know loads of famous people or something, but there's been a few people over the years that have been kind of once removed. And I think it's really hard to be famous as I've understood it. Um, and for everybody to know you and know your business and all of those things is, is hard. So I wonder how lonely that feels, which is kind of the irony. And anyway, I just feel a bit kind of thrown into wondering about Like, who do I want to be famous to? Like, maybe I could be famous to my, I think I'm quite famous to my daughter, Beth, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) what does it even mean, famous? I now want to look up the word famous to see what that means, but I feel like this really helps me to feel the size that I am and to feel the dignity in that. And to walk out of the, I'm going to go to the farmer's market today and like to walk out of my door feeling like I'm, I'm the size that I am and I have the power that I have. And that doesn't mean that I have the power to call off a rail strike or change the way that our climate is going. But I do have the power to be who I want to be today. And I do have the power of my intent and the power of my, um, being being a person who is kind for example or um takes the time to attend to another human being whoever they might be and to see people and i think for me that's the kind of central wish is to be able to be myself and to be to have faith and confidence in walking out of the house and being in my house and 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 feeling joyful and powerful and impactful even if it's on the scale that's just mine because it follows what Nick is saying that however small my actions are they have this vast consequence and ripple effect into the universe this conversation about being famous because I think this is exactly what we're talking about, exactly what Nick is talking about, is that <clears throat> there is this myth in the in the culture that the only people who matter are the ones who are widely known, or it's so it's so not the case. It's such a mistake. It probably serves the projects of fame to have a story that the only people who really matter are the famous ones. Like that keeps that whole edifice going. <laughs> right? You can make your money out of being famous or something, you know, get status <laughs> out of being famous. <laughs> But actually, as you were talking, Lizzie, I was also just thinking about another another way of looking at this, which is it's really easy to think in terms of cause and effect. Like my 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 actions only matter if I can trace that I did this and that produced this and that produced this. So when look, it, it produced that over there. But another whole is, and we're very used to thinking about cause and effect. It it um it underlies a lot of the, the Western way in particular that rightly in certain domains we want to be able to understand something because we can say that thing happened and it made this happen and that gives us lots of power to but there is another whole way of looking which is that what we are is we're participating in life's being what it is and then how each of us acts and our intent and our attention and what we choose is an ongoing unfolding expression of life being itself and how we are in that shapes shapes life's existence like life will life be more or less kind will life be more or less wise will life itself be more or less attentive will life unfold into its possibilities or be constrained Mm. if instead of thinking about cause and effect i did this and it rippled out and caused that which is a good way of thinking is useful way of thinking but instead i sort of went every time i I'm up to something. I am a participant in the whole of the sum of life being what it is at this point in time is, is, is in my grasp. And then it doesn't even have to be that, you know, all the times that we speak to another person that makes a difference to them, which I'm all up for, <laughs> but it's also how I go about watering the plants in my house mm-hmm. or how I choose to pay attention to the light coming in through the window or something. They they suddenly come inside the realm of 
the tremendous power that we have that ripples out radically through time and space, changing everything. Yeah, Justin, I can't help but think of the times when I think, well, no one can see me, so this thing doesn't make a difference. You know, no one can see me. Like I've made a vow to myself that I'm not going to eat chocolate at the moment, for example. But if I sneak around the corner to Tesco's and get a dairy milk, no one's going to see me. <laughs> and it's like, oh, hold on a second. I feel like this is an invitation to feeling like we're seen. That we're seen and experienced and are experiencing. Whether we think, whether our smaller story is that we're alone or not. So you're seen as you water your plants. There's a seenness that belongs to us all that isn't about uh, validation from another human being or something. It's other than that. And I have, I feel like that's a very, um, I don't know, it's so easy for me to feel alone. So easy for me to feel separate from everything. And like I'm not witness or I'm anonymous or I'm un part of things and so this invitation to feel part of and to feel connected in like this is really I don't know it's like a feels like a very big long inquiry to hold and to let it be true to let it be true as an experiment that I'm that I matter I matter in my hmm. trips out to Tesco to get a chocolate bar. I matter to in the moments where I'm trying to look up how to plant a sweet pea. Or I matter in the moments where I'm trying to clean out a pot that's kind of got something disgusting in it that I forgot about in the garden, or you know, basically the kind of things I'm going to do today. Mm. And they're and they're not social activities, you know, they're like things I just have to get on with myself. And and there's some social activity that also, as you say, matters in terms of the way I'm with people and the way I am with the glass vase is matters just as much as I am with the person whose play I'm going to go and see. Oh, what a wonderful place to end our conversation. <clears throat> Sitting together in the mattering of everything. And thank you, Lizzie, for always being such an open and luminous presence in our conversations, bringing yourself as if, because it does, as if it matters in every moment. And uh, thank you to everyone who's with us, because one of the things that I'm coming to see from our conversation is how we listen matters too. Mm. So our the, the, the big rippling conversation that goes on that starts here with the choice of a source and then notches out one level because we get to talk but then simultaneously notches out an infinite number of levels because of the conversations inside and between everyone who's with us whether whether you listen privately or whether you share it with someone else or talk to someone else or who knows the way w which we conduct ourselves in the world means something so all being well we will be back next week with a, a source that you're going to choose for us lizzie and uh, we'll see you all then. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Justin.